Siri sent me this 24mm anamorphic lens to test on the FX30. Now this was my first time using an anamorphic lens and I definitely learned a lot and I made a few mistakes. If you consider picking up an anamorphic lens or you have been faking the anamorphic lens with black bars or adapters, I'll be explaining the drawbacks and also the benefits of shooting with anamorphic lenses and also a few things to consider before you start. So let's just jump right into it. So what is an anamorphic lens? Well an anamorphic lens squeezes the image horizontally to fit a wider field of view onto the sensor. You'll get these like horizontal lens flares, you'll also get oval bokeh and a more even roll off from focus to out of focus. Anamorphic lenses are typically way more expensive than traditional lenses and they produce a completely different character than a still lens. Some of my favorite movies use anamorphic lenses like Pulp Fiction, La La Land and Inception. So this lens from Surrey is for Super 35 or APS-C lenses. They do actually offer a full Super 35 set and also they do have full frame sets available. So this being the 24mm for the FX30, it should give you a 35mm full frame field of view, right? Well, it actually gives you a much wider field of view, that being 25mm and 35mm full frame field of view high. And that's the difference between just adding black bars to your footage. You don't actually get that full stretched out wide cinematic aspect ratio. You're basically just cropping your image and reducing the resolution over footage. Now I've fallen in love with series anamorphic lenses because they produce a very good image while being at a very affordable price. This 24mm is sharp but not clinically sharp so it still gives you that nice cinematic soft look. It definitely has its own unique character compared to other lenses that I've used in the past and the distortion is actually kind of nice. I did notice that you're not going to get straight lines out of this lens but it's similar distortion that you'll see in movies using anamorphic lenses and it just kind of feels intentional. I also haven't seen any major chromatic aberration or funny artifact that I have seen on cheaper third-party lenses and at about $600 USD depending if it's on sale or not it is a very affordable price compared to other anamorphic lenses which are around $30,000 to $50,000 USD just for one lens and you could pick up a whole set of these lenses for a fraction of that price. So I really like the weight of this lens and the size of this lens. It makes it a really viable rigging option on the FX30. It has a 72 millimeter filter thread and it's made of full metal so it can actually withstand the weight of putting my Nissi matte box on the end. The focus and the aperture ring is very smooth and also very well dampened. I love the look of that oval bokeh and also the roll off between what's in focus and out of focus. The blue flare is great. It's not too much, which I'm super happy about. It's not overpowering. I would like to have the gold flare like they do on the full frame versions, but that's just more of a personal preference. Before we get into what I don't like about this lens, this video does not have a sponsor, but it is actually supported by you guys who have purchased my Lightroom presets, my cinematic LUTs, and also my newly released S-Log free LUTs that are all linked in the description down below. And I'm pleased to report that you guys have given me some really great feedback on these S-Log free LUTs, so I really appreciate you guys' continued support. Also clicking the links down in the description down below really does help out the channel and makes it possible for me to keep making free content for you guys. So let's get into what I don't really like about this lens and there's actually not much not to like about this lens. I guess one of them is that there is no gear rings on the aperture or the focus ring like Siri have on their other anamorphic lenses for full frame. You actually sent me their follow focus system and you can just attach these kind of rubber ones so it's not a major, I just would rather not have to attach those. The close focus distance isn't amazing at 60 centimeters but that's not really Siri's fault, that's more of an anamorphic thing as anamorphic lenses just do not have close focus distances. And another reason why this is is because of the focus system they use on this anamorphic lens which was used on older anamorphic lenses and even popular anamorphic lenses today, the Kawa lenses. So this is called mechanical synchro focus 
And what it really means is that it just does not allow the lens to get a consistent squeeze factor from close focus to infinity focus. And here's an example of the Siri 24 millimeter anamorphic at the max close focus distance of my face and then comparing it to my Samyang 24mm f1.8 still lens. This is actually really easy to fix in post and I found that at close focus distance the de-squeeze was about 1.25 and then infinity would be 1.33 and you can just fix this in post. I don't think it's that noticeable but I just wanted to let you guys know about that. And for the price point you really can't expect this to be perfect. I mean it is a fraction of the price of a true anamorphic lens. You're saving a lot of money and you just have to put a little bit of extra work in post production. So there's a few other considerations when you're using an anamorphic lens. One of them being is that I really recommend you picking up a monitor that can de-squeeze your footage. The FX30 does have a de-squeeze for 133 footage. After the de-squeeze it becomes very small on the LCD screen and you can't really see that much. And these water shots were actually shot in a water housing with the Sony a7 IV in Super 35 mode. So just goes to show you don't need a monitor um, but it is nice to have to accurately judge your focus and also your composition. Also this is available for Fuji and RF mounts etc. For whatever reason Sony does not have open gate. I mean why is there even an anamorphic mode in the FX30 if you can't shoot open gate? And I guess that's why this is a 1.33 anamorphic lens. So it's designed for 16 by 9 to give you that cinematic aspect ratio of 2, 4 to 1 after the 1.33 de-squeeze. Also I didn't actually know that you're not meant to use IBIS on anamorphic lenses and I use the FX30 with active steady shot and that actually works pretty well because it does crop in a little bit. If you use the standard you are going to get a, a few dancing corners. So I definitely wouldn't shoot everything in anamorphic. It is a very fun aspect ratio to shoot in. In the future I'm looking to buy a 16mm film camera that shoots in a 4x3 aspect ratio with the 1.33 anamorphic lens that will actually give me a 16x9 image so that's pretty cool I'm keen to test that out. I'm also planning on doing a video of doing some cinematic portrait photography using an anamorphic lens so if you guys want to see those videos make sure you subscribe for future content if you like this video and you want to see more videos like this make sure you hit that like button leave a comment in the description down below also if you like the way that i edited some of these photos and also my videos i do sell LUTs presets and also LUTs to convert slog free to rec 709 so those are all linked down in the description down below and we'll see you guys next time